G'day everyone. Adrian Locke has asked me, how do you humanely dispatch carp? Now, I've been asked this question a lot over the years. How do I kill carp? In this video, I'm gonna explain how I kill them, how I think is the best way to kill them, and what I do with them after I've killed them. Hey Robbie, you've got mail. You better check your mailbox. Okay, Robbie, thanks, mate. What's the address? Post Office Box 3006, Yoranga LPO, Wangaratta 3677. Rightio, before I talk about carp, I've got a couple of uh, parcels here I've got to rip into. This one's from Aiden Griffin. That's a cool picture, Aiden. It's very bright, though. I'm not sure what the height at that angle people can see it. That's a really cool picture. Dear Robbie, my name is Aiden and I am eight years old. I love fishing and you encourage me to go fishing as much as possible. I feel sorry for you because Sky, tell me if I've spelled her name wrong, has been in hospital. Sky is S-K-Y-E, mate. You are very, very close. I know what it feels like to have someone in your family in hospital. I've even been in hospital myself. Now I've got a few questions. What is your favourite lure? Mine is orange Savage Gear bladed spinner. Oh, so many to think about, Aiden. I love the Strike Tiger Nymph in black and gold colour for trout. I love the Strike Tiger 1.5 inch curl tail grubbing white bait pearl for redfin. For yellow belly, I love the little jiggle fishing lipless crankbait. I think it's called a little ripper. I'll put a link in the description below to them. They're a great yellow belly uh, lure. Had I known what was actually in the parcel, I would have brought these out to show you on camera. For Murray Cod, it's a bit of a tough one. I love the Coolabung Cod Walker, the 70 mil. That's a great Murray Cod lure. But then so too is the Old Mate Diving Lure, the Predator Lure. There's so many. But those lures that I've just mentioned are certainly right up there with those species, buddy. What type of fish was your favourite fish? Mine was a redfin perch. What type was my favourite fish? Jeez, Aiden, you make it sound like I'm dead. What? <laughs> it still is my favourite fish. <laughs> and guess what, mate? I think mine's probably the redfin as well, just like you. I love redfin. I love them all. I love all sorts of fish, all types of fishing, but I've got a real soft spot for redfin. There's so many things I like about them. The small ones are easy to catch. Kids can go out and catch them. They're easy to get a hold of and they're great fun. But when you get the big ones, they're like trophies. So if you've got an easy fishery and a hard fishery together, as well as the nicest eating fish in the river, I just love redfin, mate. I'm with you. What was the strangest bycatch that you've ever caught? Mine was a dog lead. I wonder where the dog is. <laughs> Mate, I hope the dog's okay. I caught a rifle butt many years ago, or a shotgun butt, I think it was off a rifle, the stock that goes into your shoulder. I uh, got snagged and I, I was coming in, it's coming in and I pulled in the butt of an old gun. <laughs> that was back in the 1980s. That was a, uh, a very interesting bycatch. And I think just recently, in one of my cray fishing videos, I pulled up a cray net and I caught a trout cod about 50 centimetres long. That was certainly a very unexpected bycatch. I, I, a uh, trout caught in a cray net, and then just recently I caught a weather loach in a yabby net. So quite often I catch strange and interesting things, but probably the, things that, the thing that sticks out in my mind the most was when I caught that rifle butt many years ago. <laughs> I hope you have a good day from Aiden. Thank you so much, Aiden. Oh, I've got a joke that I made up. Question, what happened when the cyclone entered the, tea, the talent show? The judges were blown away. <laughs> Aiden, that is a great joke, and that is a great drawing. Because it's so white, it's hard to show you because it's very bright, but uh, that is fantastic. Aiden, thank you so much for the questions. Thank you for the letter, and thanks for the drawing, and thanks for the joke. Now, this has been sitting in the shed here for a few days, and curiosity has got the better of me. Wow, look at the size of that Murray Cod. Who is it? Let's read the letter. G'day, Robbie. I enjoy watching your videos, especially your yabbying videos. They are awesome to watch. I hope you enjoy this rod holder I made for you. You probably haven't seen it yet because I went a bit overkill with the wrapping and tape. I have a YouTube channel called The Outback Fisherman. You know what? The Outback Fisherman. He won the uh, Russell Harris Lures competition. I only awarded it just yesterday. Now, the day after I, I awarded that prize. So the Outback Fisherman must have sent this before he won the prize. <laughs> what a coincidence. <laughs> Anyhow, I own a uh, YouTube channel called The Outback Fisherman. Check out The Outback Fisherman. Where I like to fish and do other outdoor things. My favourite fish to catch are yellowbelly and Murray Cod. The picture on the other side is my biggest cod, 95 centimetres. 
Great job on the videos, best wishes, Adrian. You little ripper, and Adrian's 14 years old. This is so cool. Check this out. He's made it out of a bit of timber like I would, but he sanded it and varnished it so that it won't rot, and he's engraved my channel name on it. Look, Robbie Fishing. I've got a Robbie Fishing rod holder. I love this rod holder. Sticks, fork-shaped sticks are the best rod holders of the lot, and this is an absolute ripper. Adrian, you are very talented. How good is that? It smells so nice because you've got varnish on it. That is oh, so awesome. Adrian, thank you so much. Right. I've got a tackle club box, and it's the cod box. This is the Murray Cod October box. They look awesome. Check them out. We've got some big chase bait soft plastics, an Oz spin spinner bait, a ballista juggernaut. That actually looks really awesome. Team Raptor, I love these. These guys at Team Raptor are the nicest people, and that is an awesome looking lure. I've got another one of them here that came to my mail time once before. A mask. And we've got an I'd rather be fishing mask, but I've got mine done up a little bit loose at the moment, so it's not going to stay up. An I'd rather be fishing mask. Have a look at that. That is really cool. What an appropriate thing to have in a fishing box at the moment. I'd rather be fishing written on it. I think that's really cool. An Oz spin spinner bait. Some massive chase bait soft plastics. An awesome looking uh, ballista juggernaut 90 lipless crankbait. And a, an awesome looking Team Raptor Red Eye Lipless Crankbait 70mm, which will be great for Murray Cod and Yellow Belly. Just a quick note, that's the October Tackle Club box. When you order, if you order the November Tackle Club box, it's going to be different to the October one because they're a random box, like a lucky dip every month, and they change from month to month. And there's been a couple of times where people have uh, gone out and bought a box and expected to get what I've opened, not realising that it changes every month. I have mentioned it a couple of times in the past, but just so that you know, that's the October box. Right now we've got Chase Baits, Chase Baits Curly Tail 6 inch, $13.90. Ozpin Codspin, $17. Rapala Shadow Wrap, I forgot to show you that one. <laughs> but wait, there's more. If you're one of the first callers, that looks like a mirror carp. Doesn't it? It looks just like a mirror carp. Look at the size of it. It's a huge, big, shallow running Rapala that looks just like a mirror, a mirror carp. I actually, when I opened the box, I took that one out and sat it beside there and then uh, forgot all about it. And then when I was reading this, I thought, where did that go? The awesome box just got even awesome. And that's a lot of good stuff in this box this month. That's probably the best tackle club box I think I've seen. Chase Baits Curly Tail 6 inch, $13.90. Ozspin Codspin, $16.99. Rapala Shadow Wrap, $32.95. $33, that's the big ticket item. The, Red, the Raptor, Team Raptor Red Eye, $16.99. Ballista Juggernaut, 90 mils, $19.99. Total value, $100.82. Subscription cost is $69.99. Bet I can get it cheaper. If you use my discount code Robbie10 at the at the checkout at tackleclub.com.au, Robbie10, you will get 10% off all once-off boxes, which will be very handy leading up to Christmas now. And for subscriptions, you'll get 10% off the first box, and that's Robbie10S. Robbie10S for subscriptions, Robbie10 for the boxes, and that is an awesome-looking box. Right now, Adrian Locke asks, how do you humanely dispatch a carp? What I like to do, Adrian. When I catch them, I like, if I've got to kill something, I want it killed dead, instantly. I don't believe in leaving things alive in an unnecessary pain. I don't care how graphic it looks, I just want lights out as quickly as possible in the best interest of the fish that's probably suffering. So when I catch a carp and I kill it, I unhook it, usually I measure it and get a photo, then I just walk along and go stomp with the heel on my foot. And I give it a fair old heel down on the head. And that usually kills it. But then usually I'll turn it over and stomp the other side in as well, just to make sure that it's dead and not in any pain. And then I kick it back in the water and that will float downstream and the yabbies and the shrimps will eat it as it's decaying and eventually it'll rot away. A couple of people have raised concerns with me putting dead fish back in the water, dead carp back in the water. Some people, some people think that dead carp can still spawn and the eggs can still hatch out. It's not true, it's dead, it's dead. It's just dead, dead things don't spawn. 
And somebody else raised the concern recently that I shouldn't put dead carp back in the water because as they decay, they'll take the oxygen out of the water and deplete the oxygen so much that all the other fish will die. That's not true either. That would be true if there was thousands of carp in the water and there was a huge big mass of carp depleting a huge big mass of oxygen out of the water. But the uh, just one or two carp floating down the river isn't going to do that. You need literally need hundreds, if not thousands, of carp before that would be a problem. You'd, depending on the size of the water, of course, if you've just got a little bucket of water, the carp, the decaying carp, will probably take the oxygen out. But when you've got a great big river, a few dead carp isn't going to make any difference at all to the oxygen levels. So I usually like to just stomp on them with my heel a couple of times and then kick them back in the river. The heel kick. Stomp them with the heel, kick them back in the river. Sometimes, some people will hit them on the head. Sometimes I'll do that as well. I'll get a stick, a heavy stick, and I will whack it on the head as hard as I can. I'll give it a fair old whack, and then I'll roll it over. But I don't just stop at one or two whacks. I give it two or three whacks. I just want to make sure it's dead as quickly as I can. And once again, I'll kick it back in the river. I don't like to leave dead carp laying on the bank because they stink the place out. And the next people that come down, their dog will roll on the dead carp. There'll be flies everywhere. It'll stink to buggery. And if you put them back in the water, that gives the shrimp, the yabbies, the crayfish, the water rats a chance to eat them. And even water birds like pelicans or sea eagles and stuff will see them, whistling kites, and they'll get a chance at them as well. So I just think that by killing them, then kicking them back in the water, you're feeding other uh, other life forms in the water and keeping the ecosystem alive. Now you can, there's a number of ways you can kill them. My favourite is the, the heel. Stomp, then kick it back in. And then I said sometimes I use a stick. If I'm in a boat, I might use a knife and I usually just go straight through, cut the neck. Some people will stab right down between the eyes and get them in the brain. Everyone's got their own way of doing it, but the most important thing is that people do kill them quickly and humanely. There's nothing worse than seeing a dead fish flapping around on the bank just dying a slow death. I don't like it at all. I've seen it recently, a guy caught one and his dog, his dog was barking at it and biting it and the fish was flopping around and I just thought, the poor fish, just kill it. Just kill it and then let the dog do what it wants to do. It's all about, I don't care how graphic it looks, I don't, I don't leave the carp killing scenes in my videos because YouTube can say that that's, uh, that that's graphic content or sensitive content and demonetize my videos. Sometimes I've had to leave it in. A couple of times just lately I've had to leave it in, the, the killing scene in, but I try not to. Normally I just kill them, throw them back in the water. So hopefully that answers your question, Adrian. Thank you very much, Aiden, for the letter. And thank you, Tackle Club, for this awesome box. So I've got an Adrian... Today's mail time proudly brought to you by Adrian, Adrian and Aiden.